Today, um, as we start in this series, um, we have decided to lengthen this series two more weeks. Yeah. Because as I started outlining the rest of the six weeks, I said, I, I got some more stuff to say. <laughs> and I really think that God really has some more stuff to say about things in relationship that we don't really talk about, that really are assumed, that really we, we pray that our relationships work, but we do more maintenance and healing than we do preparation in relationships. And so I really want to help people win in relationships because that's what God wanted to do. That's why he left us the Bible. That's why he gave us the institution of church to help us win in relationship. Everybody say win in relationship. Win in relationship. And so this week in relationship goals, we're going to talk about something that has gotten a really bad rap. Like it's something that when you think about it, it doesn't even seem appealing or good at all in most circles but as I studied the Word of God it really revolutionized my mind about how important that this topic we're about to talk about is in every single person's life and the topic we're going to talk about today is singleness you see no woos on that it's like oh singleness Oh, Pastor Mike, now you said this was a series on dating and marriage. I, I, I'm struggling in my marriage right now. May I suggest to you that it's a singleness problem? Well, Pastor Mike, I got my boyfriend here. Look, he don't even kind of charge. And you're going to talk about singleness? I'm not even single anymore. But your singleness may be the issue in your relationship so so today's message title is single but not alone okay so so I want you to just sit with that for a second single but not alone and as I begin to look at what the Word of God says about relationship it started to to, to literally stun me how much God talks about the individuals and not the relationship. When you come into church, you hear stuff like this. Marriage is the cornerstone of the relationship that God created for the human family. And I've heard that all my life, something like that. But when I go back to the beginning, the first thing that God created was not marriage. So when I look at the landscape, everybody's goal, or I'll say most people's goal, is marriage in relationship. That is the ultimate goal that we come out the world. When you see little kids and they're playing with Ken and Barbie, they're, what are they saying? Oh, they're going to get married. And we learn this society-wide. We learn this from church culture. You walk up into a church and be 25, 30, 35, and ain't, you ain't got nobody, and they looking at you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Everything Okay. Now, I've been seeing you spend a lot of time with your friend Jerome. <laughs> what kind of relationship do you and Jerome have? <laughs> Mothers say to their sons, come on and get married. I need grandkids before I die. <laughs> we, we, we say stuff. We say stuff that allows people to feel that somehow in my single state, I may not be enough. Like, if I'm not married, I'm not enough. And, and God knows the desires of your heart. So, so I'm, I'm not trying to get anybody to think um, that, that God doesn't want them to be married and that, that you can't have a loving relationship and that what you dream about and see. But I, I, I just want, you, I want to be real with you this, this morning. And I want to let you know that singleness may be the most important time of your life. The space where you are not responsible 
for anybody else except yourself. The problem is most of us negate that season trying to get to a preferred future that we don't know about. You, you see the look of marriage. You see the, the appeal of marriage. You see the pictures of marriage. You see the pic, but you don't know what it takes to do that. You assume you know what it takes. And I begin to do some research, y'all. 50% of marriages in America end in divorce. I didn't say 15%. I said 50% end in divorce. What does that mean, Pastor Mike? That would be the same thing as your flight attendant telling you that this plane has a one out of two chance of getting to our next destination. How often would you fly? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? The, <laughs> there's a 50% chance this thing is going to crash and burn and you're going to die. But so many people go into marriage so haphazardly. Oh, I've seen them. They fine. Oh, look. Light skin. Hazel eyes. Just what I dreamed. But you looked on the outer. And you didn't know what was on the inside. And see, this is the thing about marriage. Is it such a strong covenant that God tries to convince us not to do it unless you know that's what you're supposed to do. And most of us are so sick of singleness that we think that marriage will solve our loneliness problem. Uh-oh, I'm coming to somebody's house today. She, you sick of you. So you think you with somebody else is gonna make it better. But they sick of themselves too. So both of y'all about to just be sick. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you think or you thought, and if married people were honest in this room, you see how quiet everybody is today? <laughs> like nobody, just everybody just holding their spouse, just <laughs> tight-lipped. But we're coming to give truth so it'll set you free. Okay? What ends up happening is that most people get into marriage and they try to figure out their singleness. Because they never took the time to be single, so they're trying to figure out how to be married and be single, and it never will work. See, because when you, when you get into marriage, then there's conditions that you have to do as the husband, that you have to do as the wife, and, but you do your own thing. You got your own car. You I-N-D-E-N-D. -E okay, you're independent. I understand. Okay? Yeah, I understand that you, you got all that, but you were supposed to be all that before you became one. Uh, so you're mad now because you just can't spend your money any way you want to. But that's not your money anymore. It's y'all's money. For this reason, should a man leave his wife and the two become you mad? Because you didn't take time and figure out you single. And when you don't know you, you won't pick right because you'll pick what you think you want. And you have no basis on it because you have not had the time to figure you out. Now, some people are in this room like, Pastor Mike, it's too late for me. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> I get it now. I understand. I've been married for two years and I hate it. Save me. <laughs> Let me help you. You're stuck. I, 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 I'm not about to give you no type of remedy to that. You're stuck. Unless adultery is committed. Now, this is the one reason God gives for divorce. Not we've grown apart. Yeah. 
It's going to be tight in here. I, I'm going to need police escort as we leave. Y'all help me. Not we don't relate anymore. Not even he hit me. I don't condone that. The Bible says leave the house. Oh, y'all about to be real mad if y'all don't read y'all Bible. But that's not the reason to leave the marriage. See, what happens is, is that because people go into marriage so haphazardly, they think they can get out of it so haphazardly. That's right. That's right. But when you get into marriage, that's why divorce is so detrimental because it's the ripping away of souls. It's not just we're not connected body it literally my mind will and emotion was connected with that person now to get a divorce we are ripping that apart that's why divorce is the worst death to ever have it's worse than actual death oh pastor mike i promise you it is why it's because when somebody actually dies there's closure you can bury them you can cry you can grieve and it's over with divorce it is a perpetual death because every time you see them it's a resurrection <laughs> of your emotions I can't I can't believe I wasted all that time on him I can't and then he gonna be sitting over there with her <laughs> you were having a good day until this you have to talk about finances and alimony and kids and all these different things. See, some of you are so ready to get married. Before you do, you need to talk to somebody who's been divorced. Because they will tell you, don't do this if you don't know that this is what you're supposed to do. And even... See, some of y'all looking at me like, that's not scriptural. What is you talking about? Paul told us. Go to 1 Corinthians for, for all the haters in the building. <laughs> Go to 1. Okay, I'm going to back up and do something first. Because I need you to see it and I want to give it to you lovingly first. See, this, this series is to help you. It's not to leave you in the dark. And the enemy has been tricking so many of you because you don't have knowledge. You don't understand. You don't know the word of God. So you get in things asking God to bless it. And he said, that's against my formula. Like, I can't bless what I can't bless that. You missed it. So I'm trying to show you the keys in the word of God. That'll give you the formula that God can bless. So go to Matthew 22. Be because when I started thinking about singleness and all this other stuff, I said, okay, God, you're going to have to give me a formula to explain this to people. He said, I got you. He said, um, they were asking him, teacher, which... Is the most important commandment in the law of Moses and Jesus replied you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind that was the expected one that was the one they were like yeah I got that I love you Jesus there's no one else like you they didn't they didn't see this next part coming and second as equally important so it could have said one and one a not really second because he put it on the same. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, but as equally important. That, that's really not debatable. It's as equally important. I want you to see this. He says, love your who? Neighbor. But there's a prerequisite to loving your neighbor. You miss it. We focus so much on loving our neighbor, but you can only love your neighbor at the level that you love. Your... So you can't figure out how to love somebody else in a relationship if you have not figured out how to love yourself in singleness. And how many of us have skipped that process and tried to learn how to love somebody else? It's the wrong formula. God has priority to what he does. So what's the priority? Love God, love yourself, then love others. Let's do it again. Love God, love yourself, 
then love others. The reason you don't know how to give a compliment to her is because you've always felt low self-esteem and insecurity about you. My head. Look at these feet. Size 13. I can't wear no skinny jeans. <laughs> I'm short. I'm fat. I'm tall. I'm skinny. You have never been alone long enough to love you. So the first thing you do when you get in relationship is you pick out everything wrong with them. Because you've never heard, learned how to love you. You've never been isolated enough to get okay with who God created you to be. And so when you don't understand your singleness, you take it into the marriage trying to make them your makeup for what's deficient in you. So you put an unrealistic expectation on another jacked up human being. And you're mad all the time because I don't feel good enough. I'm not enough. And you were supposed to make me good enough. And your hair ain't cute enough. And you put on some weight. It doesn't matter. They'll never be able to feel the emptiness that you never became okay with and let God feel when it was supposed to be you and him. And I know this is over some of y'all's head. Y'all was like, I just was trying to come here and see if I could find me one. I was trying to see what she in here. She is, but she can't see you how you are. You, 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 don't, you don't look like what you will look like once you get the revelation. And so she got blinders on to how you are now. But if you would allow God to have you in a place of singleness to create in you the character the work ethic, the intelligence, the emotional health that it takes to be in real relationship, I promise you, God will allow the right persons to come around. Pastor Mike, why you say persons? Because God doesn't choose your wife for you. And God doesn't choose your husband for you. Uh-uh, Pastor Mike, the devil is a liar. <laughs> No, 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 no. I got a prophetic word, March 26, 2014. God said he was going to be tall. Lie. God said he was going to be paid. Lie. God said, okay. I hear these words all the time, but this is the thing that you have to understand. The greatest thing that's more important than marriage, that's more important than that is your salvation. And if God would not make you be saved. He set it all up and he said, whosoever will. You still have choice. Even when Adam, he made Adam, he said that he presented Eve. The Greek word there means he paraded her by like, you like this? You like this? You like this? That's what it actually means because he still had choice. And so what? Many of us are doing is thinking that God is going to assign this person to overlook all your dumbness. All your not preparing, all of your everything, and, and their mind, God assigned them to me. They will be like, I don't choose you. And, and I'm trying to help people know that's why your state of singleness is so important, not just to you, but to God. Because he wants to give you vision in that time. He wants to give you purpose in that time. He wants you to know who you are without a person. Because if you don't know that, it will put you on a spin to always be needing someone else to validate who God's created you to be. Can I, can I bust your bubble? You can reach purpose without being married. Jesus did it. I'm all up in your religion right now. Like there's people in here that are like, oh my God, Paul did it. Yeah. I, why are you saying this, Pastor Mike? Because I don't want you, my big goal on all of this, I'm going to talk about marriage and dating and all that in the next couple weeks. I think I'm going to get Pastor Natalie to preach with me on marriage. I think we're going to, you going to do it with me? You going to do it with me? Uh, okay. I'm putting you on blast. I'm going to talk about all this, but what I want you to realize more than anything, if you're in this room and you're not married, so you're still single if you're engaged. 
Uh oh. Still single. You're still single if you're dating. You're still single if you're courting. You're still single if you're single. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're still single. But I'm trying to encourage you there's nothing wrong with the season that God has you in. Now, hear me. This goes against everything you've been told up until this point. You 34? You should be married. What a house and a car and a dog. I mean, isn't this the narrative that keeps playing? But Jesus said, equal to loving me is you need to learn how to love yourself. And then you can take from the extension of loving me and loving yourself. Then you can pour out oil and love somebody else. May I submit to you? That the problem in our society is not a relationship problem. It's a singleness problem. And until people get okay being single to love God and to love themselves, their relationships will always be the place where they try to get fulfillment that can never come from that relationship. And I want you to understand my first point is it's more important to be single than it is to be married. Okay? Write it down. It's more important to be single than it is to be married. In the beginning, God did not create marriage first. He created a single human being. If we look at this building, what's the first thing they did to create this building? They laid a foundation. You don't see the foundation. You don't even hear the foundation. No, nope, nothing. But if the foundation was not there, this entire building would collapse. I want to tell you about what I call the prerequisite for divorce. Pastor Mike, why are you talking about divorce so much right now? And I, I want you to know that your singleness is so important that you want to avoid getting into relationships that will not succeed because divorce is the worst thing that can happen to anybody relationally. Will Pastor Michael in their life after divorce? Yes, there is. And we're going to talk about that and we're going to help you walk through that. But I promise you, if you can avoid this pitfall, you want to. Do you know how many people we counsel who are broken children of people who got divorced? And they parents on the Christmas card, look at my family, they're so awesome. I'd be wanting to send them texts to their kids balled up, crying on the floor because of your decisions and you not making the proper effort that you needed to do to make sure you were in your right place before you invited him into this relationship. And because you were lonely, then you had sex and you had kids because you wanted to feel wanted because he stopped wanting you because he showed you in the dating relationship that he didn't really want you, but you were so eager to get in a relationship. So you got in a relationship and then you didn't feel enough so you had a baby so your whole attention became about the baby and because your whole attention is about the baby he doesn't feel wanted so he steps out of the relationship and goes and bees with her and then it's broken and that's one scenario of a million because we think singleness is not necessary we think marriage is the ultimate goal now and it could be your ultimate goal. And God wants that for you if you want it for yourself. But don't go into this haphazardly. Don't look for a boyfriend so you can say that you're a Facebook official. Don't, don't, don't do that. I had a girl come up to me one time and just said, it just feels like it's time for me to be in a relationship. I mean, she did just like that. Just like, it just feels like it's. It's time for me to be in a relationship. And I said, why? I've been single two years. I mean, that's a long time, Pastor Mike. It's just, it's just time. <laughs> and I told her, I said, don't do that. I said, I really feel like God's trying to supply you with some stuff right now. He's trying to create you and mold you and all that other stuff. I want you to be married. I know that it's going to happen for you. You're beautiful. You're talented. You're gifted. God's going to do that. But just don't, don't just, don't just. Because, because if you go into it like that. 
you'll treat it like that. You end up in a marriage like that. And then you'll think divorce is like that. It's, e it's all easy. Just <laughs> Y'all going to be walking around. This <laughs> but hear, hear what I'm saying to you. Hear, hear what I'm saying to you is that there's a prerequisite for a divorce. Can I explain it to you? Okay. You can't get divorced if you don't get married. Do we agree? Okay. You can't get married, cannot get married, unless you're individuals. Agreed? Okay. So the prerequisite for divorce is marriage, and the prerequisite for marriage is singleness. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? Point number two. <laughs> marriage is only as good as your singleness. Like, like if your singleness is not a good foundation, your marriage ain't going to be the thing that builds the house. See, see, you by yourself, how you feel by yourself, how you look at the world by yourself, what you do by yourself, it's the foundation and whoever you are, that's who you're bringing to the marriage. You don't get changed because you got finer than you ever did for one day in a white dress and MAC makeup. Your makeup was beat. And you got all your stuff, your eyebrows on fleek, and you got your suit in, you finally fit in. That don't change your inside. So for that day, it's great. It's a fairy tale. It's awesome. It's momentous. It's dreamy. It's magical. But that next week, when you moved my toothbrush, why? <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetie. Why did you move my toothbrush? Did you, you used my toothbrush? No, no, you didn't. Hear what I'm talking about why people get divorced. When the seeds of these things start is because they never really knew what they were getting into. Okay, so, so I'm trying to help you right here. Marriage is only as good as your singleness. Let me ask you a question. If they knew, whoever you're trying to get in relationship with, if they knew you, how you know you, would they want to be married to you? No, no, no. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about how you, you know the stuff you do that don't nobody else know you do. You know how nasty you are. You know how anal you are about some stuff. You know that some people got a five second rule, you got a five minute rule. We all have things that people don't know, but if they knew you, like you know you, would they still marry you? Because that's what the process is supposed to look like when you come into marriage. Can, can I give you something that changed my whole life? Marriage doesn't improve your singleness, it exposes it. I'm going to say it again because y'all missed it. Marriage doesn't improve your singleness. People think that marriage is the upgrade for them to become something better. All that thing is going to do is pull back the sheet on who you really are. So you have to make sure that your preparation in the time of being single is one that is intentional. Where we do what? Spend time with God, spend time with yourself, and then you can be focused on loving up. When the last time you went to the movie by yourself? When the last time you took yourself on a date? Some of y'all like, that doesn't even make sense. That just, <laughs> take myself on a date. Just go somewhere you ain't never been before and eat and think about your life. And ask yourself questions. Why did I respond like that? Find out about you. Can I give you two of the most amazing words that you can ever have, whether you're single or married, but will real help you in your singleness? Self-aware. So Self-awareness is one of the biggest epidemics in the world. Like, you don't know how you make everybody else feel. You don't know that you stink. Like, we all smell that. You don't smell that? Like, you, like... You, it, it, like, like, like you ain't even there. Like he was here, wasn't he? Like we can smell you. 
You live with that. <laughs> the same way we can smell you in the natural, that's what gossip smells like in the spirit. We can smell your bad character. We, we get to see your fruit drop. And it's bitter. Like, you got to become self-aware in your singleness so that you know what you're bringing to the marriage. And most people, they don't realize that nothing happens in marriage except exposure. Just please write that down. I can't hide nothing from my wife. Like, even when I remember this certain time, I'm just going to go. We're a hot church, humble, open, and transparent. I'm going to just go ahead and tell it. I remember this one time. You know, I'm a boy. And I don't know if it's just me. But as a young man, there were times where, you know, I went two and three days without taking a shower. You can say ill, but your man did it too. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. He did. But... So, I got married when I was 23, okay? Now, I've lived with people, but I didn't never live with nobody that saw me getting out the shower. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I didn't know that people calculated how many times <laughs> that you get in and you get out of the shower. I just didn't know. Like, I was never there. It's just like, yeah, I'm, okay, uh, yeah, I'm a... And how do you know if I get in and out of the shower, maybe I did a wash-up. Some of y'all know about wash-ups. Some of y'all being fake, but some of y'all really know what I'm talking about. My wife came to me one day. And you know, you're newly married. Everything is the right time. And I came up to her, I was like, babe, give me a kiss. And she's like, uh-uh. I mean, her lips was so tight. I remember a decision. Uh, and I was like, hey, girl, what you trying to do? She said, nothing. <laughs> Until you take a shower. And then begin to tell me it's been four days <laughs> since you... I, I said, how did, how did you know? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> she could smell me, but more than that, she was there. I was exposed. And where I could usually lie or slither my way out of it if I was not in covenant with somebody, the covenant makes you have to be exposed. How was Adam and Eve found in the garden? Naked. They were single people who were exposed to before. They had nothing to hide. So their singleness, how they really were, could not be hidden. My question to you is, what are you hiding from everybody else that your mate will find? Well, we've been married 10 years. She don't know. Keep being married. She'll find it. My wife has been able to point out insecurities in my life that I didn't even know was there. Oh, you're comparing yourself with them. No, I ain't. I'm talking about they doing their thing, I'm doing my thing. Okay. And it'll be like the most random moment where I'm thinking, she said, right there. Like, it's like she picked up from a six weeks ago and she's like, that's it. You're comparing yourself, I'm like, dang, I will. Why? Because God gives the anointing to your spouse to expose and uncover anything that's not like him. So if you don't work on it in your singleness, you will be frustrated in your marriage, which will lead you to divorce. That will be the death that never ends. That's why in Malachi, the Bible says, I am the Lord your God and I hate divorce. Hear what I'm saying to you, church. Marriage does not improve your singleness. It exposes it. Go to Ecclesiastes 3, and I want to read a couple of verses because this is my encouragement. Today, I just came to encourage every single person, don't jump into marriage. Because the married people, we're going to have to have two weeks for them. 
for all the craziness that they're going through and won't even say amen to because it's that real. You have people that are in marriages because they're better business arrangements. It's more convenient financially than to get a divorce. And that's not what God wanted for every person. And he can turn it around. Hear me when I say that if there's only one person that can turn marriages and relationships around, it's not our government. It's not just counseling. It's going to be Jesus intervening in those situations and getting the heart of an individual. See, some of y'all are mad because God ain't spoke to him. He won't even come to church with me. He won't even do that. And God says that the, the stance of one woman in a saved household can turn the entire household. The stance of one man. Why? Because in the beginning, he did not make Adam and Eve's marriage. He made male and he made singles. And when he made singles, that's how he wanted them to develop so that they could really be one. So I want to let you know that there's a time and a season for everything. You've heard this, but I want you to know there's a time and a season for your singleness. For everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching. I said a time to search and a time to quit searching. I said a time to search and I said a time to quit. So some of you are so occupied with finding him, your bow ass. Some of y'all looking for your Proverbs 31 woman. And literally you can walk into any room with girls and say, where are all my Proverbs 31s at? And they're like, oh, 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 oh. But y'all haven't studied that. That woman was a boss. Like the Proverbs 31 woman was so focused on purpose and doing things. She ain't even need no man. And some of y'all around here so thirsty. I done seen you naked with your clothes on. Oh. I know every crease and dimple, every, I done seen it all and you showed it to me on Instagram. Hear what I'm saying to you. You only get preoccupied of showing off what you have when you're not working on what you have on the inside of you. And if you're cultivating and moving what God has placed on the inside of you, you ain't got time to be taking selfies to where I got. I'm working my field. I'm doing what God has called me to do and I'm running that race so hard and then God will speak to me say look over and you'll find a man that's running as hard as you and you you start don't stop running for him you better keep running and when God says look there he is but what we see the women of God slowing down to take care of a grown child Oh, Jesus, help me. But he got potential. But he hasn't cultivated it. And what was God's instructions in the garden for man? Cultivate. Tend this. Work this. Dominate this. Can I give you a tape? We ain't even talking about dating yet. But if he ain't working nothing. You, you got to stay away. Can, can I help you? Because, <laughs> let me say it like this. Because if you take two eggs and one of them's rotten and you cook them together, the omelet's still bad. And what we try to do is take a good egg, pure intentions, right mindset, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. And then we bring a bad egg like he just got potential. He just had a rough past and I can fix him and I can I can do all of this. And he's supposed to teach you the word. 
he, he's supposed to lead you. How can you have somebody leading you? And fellas, the time for passive relationship and passive leadership is over. You own 2K all day? You playing video games? You with your boys all day? Bro, you need to be working something. Tending to something, getting your education, standing, but start the business, fail at a business, start another one. Why? Because I'm tending to. Uh, but you looking for him because he's fine and he got likes? See, this is the trick of the enemy, though. Because you buy something that looks good in the store, but it has no functionality in real life. But it was a final sale. So you commit to something you can't take back. And now you're mad. Because you got to stay with it. Just come on, let's be honest. But it's because people did not value their season of singleness. And there's so many other things, but I just want you to tell you there's a time and a season. Skip down in Ecclesiastes 3 and go down to verse 9. Just go to verse 11. Let's, we don't got time. It said, yet God has made everything beautiful, everything beautiful, for its own time. He's planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from the beginning to the end. So I'm concluding there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. Write this point down. It's okay to be single, but not good to be alone. It's okay to be single, but it's not good to be alone. Well, Pastor Mike, I feel like you're, you're hitting us on a technicality right now. Because last week you said that in Genesis chapter 2, Verse 18, you said, it's not good for man to be alone. That's very true. You need to know what that word means because we think it means lonely. We think it means it's not good for man to be lonely. Can I give you the definition of lonely? Because this is what we think. When somebody says, oh, they're all alone, they really have in their mind the definition of lonely, which means lonely <clears throat> is the state. Hold on, where I'm at. Help me, Jesus. Give me one second. My computer just glitched out on me. All right. I'm not supposed to say that, man. There it is. Okay. Lonely is sad because one has no friends or company without companions or solidarity. So this is what we think. It's not good for a man to be alone. Oh, he's alone. The Hebrew word for alone means all in one. It's not good. When he looked at man, he said it's not good for man to be all in one. So what did he do? He took the man and he took out of the man a woman, a man with a womb. Okay? I want you to see what happens here. So he made man not all in one. Okay, I want you to see this. So it's not good for man to be all in one. So we're not. Why? We need accountability. We need somebody to help us. We need, we need to be surrounded in relationship. Great. But this is the thing that I want everybody to see. Alone is not the same thing as single. Single. Look at the definition. Because this was God's idea. He made male and female. Single means separate. Apart and detached. Different. It means unique, original and distinct, special. It means whole. Everybody shout at me, whole. whole. God wants us to enjoy a season in our life without anybody else where we are whole, complete, unified, one with ourselves to be one. What I came to tell you is that the more single you become, the better your marriage will be. The more unique, the more whole, the, the more different, 
separate than everybody. That's what God wants for you. He's put in you a specific DNA that you have not given him the time to reveal to you. Please let God reveal to you who he's created you to be. I know you want to be married. I know you want to be booed up. I know you don't want to spend Valentine's alone in this February. But what if the time and season that God has you in is developing your singleness so that you can be everything he's created you to be and reach purpose? Hear me, people dating. Listen to me. You need to ask God, is this even worth my time right now? Hear me, because many of the things that we do and we long for are a waste of time. What the enemy cannot destroy, he distracts. Hear me, what the enemy cannot destroy, he distracts. And many of us have been distracted in wrong relationships. And that don't even have to be a a, a sexual relationship or that can be friends. What he cannot destroy, he will distract you with people and things and situations around you. Know that God wants to use this season. Last point. This is for everybody in this room. Maximize your singleness. This, I was telling some guys the other day, when you don't have nobody you're responsible for, this is time you can do stuff that will set you up for your future. Like, You don't have nobody telling you that you have to be somewhere to change somebody's diaper. You can perfect what God has placed in your hands. And we squander it on trying to fit in with people we won't even know 10 years from now. I will give you a prime example in my life. I stopped playing basketball when I was in the ninth grade. Not because I couldn't play. It was because I had found a piece of my purpose in music. I quit everything. You can ask my parents. I stopped playing basketball. The coaches would come and ask me, man, come on, play basketball. We want you to do that. I was like, nope. I'm really going to focus on music. For the next four and a half years, okay, I was in a relationship, but I was still single. Let me help you. You can, you can talk to people and be around people and hang out with people, but guess what? You're still single. And we don't get that. In today's culture, if I'm dating you, I'm married to you. Oh, this is what we think. And even if we don't think it, this is, this is how we act. If we're courting, we are married. No, I ain't. I have not committed to shut everything down that I'm doing to become one with you. Because that's what happens when you get married and the marriage has to become one. So my purpose has to align with their purpose and their dreams and goals have to align with their. Why are you asking them that after y'all married? Hear what I'm saying. Maximize your singleness. I don't care if you're 48. Girl, go on a vacation. Buy yourself. Get the big floppy hat. The big one. Walk out there, do, do your thing. Why? Because you'll never get this time back again. Pastor Mike, this is just not deep enough for me. You want me to come all to service and do this? Hear me. When you get into a relationship and you're in counseling, the first thing I'm going to ask you is what you do in your single life? What was your devotion life like in your single life? How much did you pray when you were single? Because you got all the time in the world. Well, I feel like I don't know what to do tonight. I'm going to go to the movies. I'm going to go to the Spend time with God. Get to know yourself. And then you will have the capacity to love others. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm like, that's not everybody's story. That's not everybody's testimony. I know. But the results of not spending proper time single always ends up the same. In hurt people hurting people. Pastor Mike, how do you know I counsel them all the time? I'm up here praying with y'all all the time. We're getting calls last night. I'm thinking about committing suicide. Why, Pastor Mike? Because we've let other people define who we're supposed to be when it was supposed to be just us and God. And if you could just get in a place 
where it's just you and God and you learn how to love you, flaws and all. And you start running after purpose and you become who God's created you to be. You won't marry a counterfeit because you've worked too hard on you. You're worth more now. See, when you think somebody's going to complete you, you hurry to get with them. But when you're complete by yourself, you can be choosy. Uh-uh. No, baby, I love you. You fine. But you can't lead me. I, you know what? You have everything that I really would like. Except. You haven't let God deal with those insecurities. And when we come together and consummate our marriage, what's in you automatically spiritually transfers to me. Oh, y'all don't think so? Oh, there's such thing called a soul tie. That's why you can't just go around having sex with everybody. That's a protection mechanism. Not so that, oh, God just don't want us to enjoy. If he won't, why don't he just give us our parts on our marriage day? I had somebody to ask me that one. <laughs> Pastor, why wouldn't he just give us our private areas when we got married? Like they just boop, boop, just appear. I said, because he's trying to teach you one of the fruits of the spirit, self-control. And he knew you was going to mess up and you was going to sin. That's why he sent his son. That's why his grace poured out over you. But do we use his grace? As if it's worth nothing. No, that's what Galatians tells us. We, we have to learn and progress and go back. And it's just because many of us didn't stop and recognize the time and the season God has us in. Next week, we're going to talk about dating and courting and all that other stuff. But I came to encourage somebody. This might not have been for everybody, but I promise you God spoke to you something. But there's some people in this room who have been discontent with the season of singleness that they're in. And I came to encourage you that there is nothing more precious than this time where you get to be with just you and God. And you learn how to love yourself. Maximize your singleness. Every young lady, hear me. Every young man, hear me. Maximize your singleness. When I was in that season of just perfecting myself, I worked on my gifts so much that I was able to, at a time where most people had to go work for people, I was able to start my own company. And I've never had a real job <laughs> until I came to work for Transformation Church. And Ms. Tammy will tell you how hard of a transition <laughs> that's been for me. <laughs> what are you saying, Pastor Mike? I maximized my singleness and I found some, a part of my purpose. A lot of us are looking for something that will never come until we take the time to enjoy the season that we're in. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for every person, no matter what season of life you're in. Some of you who are married are hearing this marriage and say, okay, I need to, I'm in this thing. <laughs> I, I can't go nowhere. I'm, I'm stuck in this, but we've been struggling in this. God, maybe there's some things in me, not them. Because the thing in marriage is you tend to blame the other person when you're in, in, in a place. But really, that person's a reflection of you if you're married to them. So they're trying to show you something about you. So every time I'm tripping at Natalie, why can't you just be on this? And why can't you da-da-da-da? God's saying, I'm trying to show you you. Maybe there's some areas in your singleness that God needs to work on. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. That, God, you're about to allow us to appreciate the season that we're in. God, I, I pray for, for every person who is single in this place that is not married. God, I thank you that they're single, but they're not alone. They're not all in one. You, you, have, you have created community for them. You've created a place, a church where they can be around people. God, you'll send people around them to encourage them, Father. But they, they're learning to be content with you and who you've created them to be. Father, let us not skip the step. That will save us from divorce. Let us not skip the step that will save us from heartache. God, I'm praying that our relationship goals would be based off of your word. <laughs> that they wouldn't be based off of emotions or feeling because they can lie to us. But they would be based off the truth of what your word says, Father. And you told us that we're supposed to love you as the number one commandment. And just as equally, we're supposed to love ourselves so that we can love others. 
teach us how to do that in priority. And let us build a solid foundation so that our relationships will succeed. I speak over this group of people watching and listening that their relationships will succeed. God, that you are supernaturally giving them instructions of what to do to turn it around in the name of Jesus. Every broken relationship, every person that's in a, um, walking through a, a strained relationship, every person, Father God, that's in a season of divorce, God, I'm just thanking you that you can turn it around. But you're not going to start with us. You're going to start with one. And I thank you that you change us as individuals. And may we always be perfecting our relationship with you so that you can make us who we're supposed to be. In Jesus' name, we agree. We agree. Amen. Give God some praise in this place. Amen.